Hey, it's John at Tinderbox Arts. So this video is really going to be a reference video of the Hex GS911 software. I just want to have in one place all the menus, all the options that are available with this software so we can reference it when we're, you know, sitting at a desk somewhere and we can't remember what's what. Now, the GS911 device um, is often used on BMW motorcycles and it also works with a couple others. Um, in this particular case, it's an R1200 RT, is the bike that I'll be using uh, to, con to connect this thing to today. Um, some of the menu options will not show or not work unless it is connected to the bike. And it also, the software needs to be connected to the GS911 unit itself either USB or Wi-Fi or whatever, but it has to be connected in some way for some of the things to show as well. Now I did a previous video of the unboxing of this unit, so if you want more information, go see that video. But now let's just dive right into the menus. Okay, this is the first screen we're gonna see. Um, now check out, we have version 2004.3. Um, so if you're looking at a different version, it may look a little bit different, but this is the current version as of October 2020. Um, Note down here on the bottom that it says I'm connected to the GS911 unit. Um, so we ha are connected to the unit, but not connected to the bike. Over here on the left here, you see the different bikes that are going to be available. Before I get to that, though, I want to show you up here on the top. You have a file, which is just page setup, nothing there. Under tools, you have setup for the unit. Now this is going to be set up for, and right now it's set up for USB, but there are other options here, especially if you want to use Wi-Fi. Um, go back to tools, there's options. This is where a lot of people ask uh, temperature, whether you want Celsius or Fahrenheit, distance, kilometers or miles, um, and some other things here. So uh, the days to the next service, distance to the next service. These are standard options, but you can change them. There's firmware updates if you need to update the firmware in the unit itself. If you need help from them, these are the logs you can do and send them to them. Under the help menu, your license, online help, and about. And here you can check for updates. You can do an upgrade if you need to. And the VIN numbers associated with, because you only get on this version, you only get 10 VIN numbers, uh, so 10 bikes basically that you can use this for. So it will uh, record those VIN numbers there. There are manuals, how to's, and a fact which will direct you to uh, websites. Now, getting back to uh, the bikes here on the left, you can do an auto scan, which will, if you're connected to the bike, it will try to figure out what bike you have. Otherwise, you can connect by clicking on the right series and this is the R series so you can see it goes from you know the 1250 the current ones GS RT R9T pretty much all the models and then older ones as well so they have a wide range of coverage here the F series, K series, G series. C series, you don't see those very often. And the S series. And it also does Husqvarna, which I don't know anything about, but those are the ones that are available. All right, so that's what you see in the home screen. Now, <clears throat> I need to connect this to the bike, which is what I'm gonna do next. Okay, I've connected the unit to the bike, and this screen pops up, the auto scan screen. Now the bike, it's connected to the bike, but it's not turned on and the key is not on, the key is off. So if I do an auto scan, it's gonna ask me to switch on the ignition, which I will do. 
<clears throat> Ignition is on, I'll hit OK. It will do an auto scan and try to figure out the bike for me. Or my other option is just to pick from the right here, uh, from the left here, I'm sorry, if you know what the bike is. All right, it did the auto scan. It came back with uh, the bike. And if you look right here, bike model K26, gives a mileage, next service distance, and all that kind of stuff. Now, I want to get into, let me scroll down here, sorry. Gives you all uh, equipment packages and stuff like that. I mean, you can learn everything about the bike. So all this information, if you ever needed it, is right here. Now, you can print that report. You can clear fault codes. That cleared all the fault codes. Now that I know, I mean, I already knew, but now that I know it's a K26, I can go over here and I'm going to scroll down till I find K26, which is right here. Okay. I'm going to click on that. And now here are your options um, for, you know, scanning next. So you have engine, anti-lock brake, all these things here on the left. I'm going to start with engine. Here you can read fault codes, clear fault codes, and show real-time values. And there's service functions, right? Let me start with the ECU info. All right, so this just gives the uh, information from the ECU. Fault codes. None were found. I can clear if there were some found. There weren't any found before, I already know that. Real-time values. Now these are the real-time values, in other words, the data you can see when the engine is running, all right? And you can select what you want to see here. There's a ton of stuff, all right? Now to, ha to see this, obviously you need the engine running. Right now the engine is not running, but if it were, we would see the real-time data here. And this is extremely useful when you're trying to figure out, you know, a problem, whether it shows a fault code or not. So let me just show you all these. All right, and now let me go to, um, oh, I'm sorry. There's stuff up here as well I should have mentioned. Um, you can see graphs. Um, you can log, in other words, save a file of the information if you want to do that, which again could be useful if you want to see, um, you know, take it back to a laptop or a computer somewhere and check it out uh, when you have time. Now let me go to service functions over here. If you have the engine warning light, which is something people ask for, you can turn it off here. So these are the things you can turn off or on. Now up here, I'm going to go, this is your tree here, so I'm going to go back to this. Now we'll look at anti-lock braking system. Again, ECU info, info. This is the ECU for the brake system, okay? You can read the fault codes. You can clear fault codes, just like before. Status. <clears throat> this will give you a status of, of what it finds here. If I go to output tests, whoops. All right, this is if, if you're bleeding the brakes and you want to activate the pump, uh, the ABS pump, I should say, um, in order to get all the fluid out, this is where you would go. You can do the pump motor activation um, and you can get into more detail if you want. Let me scroll down here. So you can get into individual you know, parts of the pump, if you like, 
uh, and run these tests. If I'm not going to do this right now, but if you start the test, um, it will electrically activate you know, the pump motor and cycle it. So you can test to make sure all these uh, separate functions are working, a good pump. Now let me go to the ABS bleed test. And here if I click bleed test of front brakes, for example, it will bring this up and you can see, you can read this, what it's going to do. So again, if you're bleeding the brakes, this is just the way of uh, cycling the pump to make sure you're getting all the uh, air out and, um, and making sure you have a good hydraulic system. All right, I'm going to go back to the main menu here, instrument cluster. Uh, again, you have instrument cluster it has its own computer. Everything has its own computer. All right, there's all the information on that. You can read the fault codes, clear fault codes, real-time values. All right, you can pick what you want there. Output tests. So you can test on the dash, all right, these, all these items here. So if you're not sure if something's broken or not, um, you can test all these. Then there's a cluster test. And you can, uh, you know, test the gauges, test, do a whole start self test. All right, let me go back again in the main menu. Now we're on uh, central vehicle electronics. Again, has its own ECU or at least part of it. This is the ZFE computer, so that'll give you the information on that, which one you have. Again, read the fault codes, clear fault codes, real time values. Um, you have alternator voltage, brake light switch, fuel set, you know, the whole, pretty much anything you can want here. All right. Now, the, again, the bike is not on right now, so. Output tests. You can force, you know, the low beam or the high beam to come on parking light, horn, all the indicators. So this is useful if you're not sure if, you know, you have a control, you know, a switch that's not working or whether it's the light that's not working, you can test it here. All right, ESA calibration. Now, um, I on this bike, I don't have this, but it would be um, available if you do have ESA on your bike. Fuel strip calibration. Now, I don't have a fuel strip on this particular motorcycle, but the older ones, if you did, you would have that. And windscreen calibration. If I click this, right now the windshield is moving all the way up. <laughs> all right, so it calibrated the uh, windscreen so it knows what the, uh, you know, the, the two stops where they should be. Going back to the main menu again. All right, we have the alarm system. I do not have an alarm system on this particular bike, but just to show you. Again, ECU, fault codes, and service functions. The tire sensor, let me click this. You can input the tire sensor ID. All right, so if you know you have a new TPMS sensor, and you know the ID, which is often written on the sensor, you can click this. And you could type in the new sensor. Now I already have two sets of sensors. You only get two sets, that's all you get. So, or you could just learn the sensor so it will electronically um, communicate with the new sensor. That's another way of doing it, but that's where all this function is. I'm gonna cancel that. Now, oddly, this is a little weird, but if you go back here to the main menu, you have tire pressure monitor, which is what we were just talking about. And again, fault codes, real-time values. You can pick what you want here. It does have battery sensor state. I want to select all of them. This has your IDs right here, the ones that are installed right now, and 
you know, all the information about those you could want. Tire pressure sensor learning. Now this is if you're installing new sensors. Let me click on this. Notice it, it mentions you need the sensor wake up tool. I did a whole video about this, so I'm not going to cover too much of this, but check out that other video if you like. Uh, and if you need to learn new sensors, again, I already have four sensors installed, but if you need to learn new sensors, this is where you would do it. Radio, this bike does not have a radio, but just to show you, again, read fault codes, clear fault codes, and ECU info, that's all there is. Special functions. This is where the service reminder is. We can set the date and the service reminder, this is where you would set um, when you want the next service reminder to come on um, or reset the service reminder if you've just done your oil change or whatever and you want to reset it. So this is where you would do that. Go under coding. So if you're trying to change it from miles to kilometers, uh, the time display, whether you want Fahrenheit or Celsius, this is on the cluster now, right? PSI versus, you know, bar. Um, how long the service light stays on, that kind of thing, all right? This is also where, um, when you put your blinkers on, how long they stay on. Here are your options, 10 second, 15 second, or 20 second. And the distance. So you can change that if you like as well. So those are the major, um, major menus you might want to look at. Um, it's pretty powerful, but um, I just want to make this thing as a reference so we know, <laughs> you know where to find stuff in the future.